Hello. In this video, we're going to begin using trigonometric identities. Specifically, we will introduce the sum and difference formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent, as well as double angle and half angle identities for sine and cosine. Now, an identity is an equation that is always true as long as everything involved is defined. So, for example, 2 times x minus 1 equals 2x minus 2 is an identity. It is always true regardless of the value of x. But 2 times x minus 1 equals 0 is not an identity. It is an equation, but not an identity, because it may or may not be true depending on the value of x. So there are many identities which involve trigonometric functions. For example, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always equal to 1 for any angle theta. This is an identity. It is called the Pythagorean identity. In this lecture, we will present some well-known identities and go through examples of how to use them. In a different lecture, the next one, we will discuss how to prove or derive these identities. That's not our focus here. We just want to get accustomed to using them. First up, the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine. So we're going to be relating the sine of one angle alpha plus another angle beta. So this is a sum, sine of alpha plus beta, or a difference, sine of alpha minus beta, or the cosine of this sum or difference. We're going to relate these sines or cosines of sums and differences to the sines and cosines of the individual angles alpha and beta. So we're just going to present the identities here. Geometric proofs for why they are true can be found in just about any textbook. We are focusing just on presenting them and getting used to using them. The sine of alpha plus beta is always equal to the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. The sine of the difference, however, replaces that sum with a difference. The cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta, and the cosine of the difference replaces the minus with a plus. Now, as you get more comfortable and experienced using these, you'll get used to which is which, but the basic thing that I keep in mind to keep them straight is that the formulas for sine mix up sine and cosine of the two angles, but maintain the plus versus the minus, whereas the formulas for cosine keep a cosine times a cosine and a sine times a sine, but reverse a plus to a minus or a minus to a plus. You don't need to focus so much on memorizing them. You will usually have them available to refer to, but do try to keep them straight. Now we're going to use these identities to compute sine and cosine exactly for certain angles based on some sines and cosines that we already know. Here are those formulas presented again for reference. Let's find the exact value of the sine of 105 degrees. Observe that 105 degrees can be represented as the sum of two angles, 60 and 45 degrees, that we know the sine and cosine of exactly. So using the sum identity, setting one angle alpha to be 60 degrees and the other beta to be 45 degrees, we get that the sine of 105 degrees is the sine of 60 plus 45 degrees. Now just refer to the first line, the sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta plus cos alpha sine beta. So the sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees is the sine of 60 degrees cosine of 45 degrees plus cosine of 60 degrees sine of 45 degrees. And we know these values exactly from our standard reference angles. Specifically, the sine of 60 degrees is root three over two, the cosine of 45 degrees is root two over two, cosine of 60 degrees is a half, and sine of 45 degrees is root two over two. We end up with root six over four plus root two over four, which we can combine into a single fraction. So the exact value of the sine of 105 degrees is root two plus root six, all divided by four. Next, let's find the exact value of the cosine of pi over 12 radians. Now pi over 12 is the difference pi over three minus pi over four, both of which we know the sine and cosine of. So we can apply the difference identity. This is the last of the four identities listed above. We're going to set alpha to be pi over 3 and beta to be pi over 4. So the cosine of pi over 12 is the cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Referring to that last line, we get the cosine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus the sine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. These are a half root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and root 2 over 2 respectively, giving us the same value of root 2 plus root 6 divided by 4. So what we saw is that the sine of 105 degrees and the cosine of pi over 12 were the same value root 2 plus root 6 over 4. 
This is not, in fact, a coincidence. Specifically, for any angle theta, the sine of pi over 2 plus theta will be equal to the cosine of theta. Then let's see why that identity gives us the equality that we observed in the previous examples. Now let's take a look at the sine of pi over 2 plus theta. From the sine formula, you get the sine pi over 2 cos theta plus cos pi over 2 sine theta. But the sine of pi over 2 and the cosine of pi over 2 are nice exact values, 1 and 0 specifically. So the sine of pi over 2 plus theta is simply 1 times the cosine of theta plus 0 times the sine of theta. That's just cosine theta. Now in radians, 105 degrees is 7 pi over 12. Remember, to convert from degrees to radians, multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. This will simplify to 7 pi over 12. Therefore, since 7 pi over 12 is 6 pi over 12, which is just 1 half pi, plus another pi over 12, we get that the sine of 7 pi over 12, in other words, the sine of pi over 2 plus pi over 12, that's pi over 2 plus a theta, will be exactly the cosine of that theta, cosine of pi over 12. So in our previous examples, we found the sine of 105 degrees to be equal to the cosine of pi over 12 radians, because this identity, in fact, always holds that the sine of pi over 2 plus an angle is simply the cosine of that angle. Now, using the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine, it's no great surprise that we can derive formulas for tangent, cotangent, etc. For example, here's an identity for tangent. The tangent of alpha plus beta is tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta. Tangent of the difference has this formula here. You simply swap pluses and minuses. Let's use these to find the exact value of the tangent of minus 105 degrees. The question becomes, can you represent minus 105 degrees as the sum and or difference of two angles that you know the tangent of already? There are a couple of choices we could make here, but we're going to go with minus 60 degrees minus 45 degrees. So we're going to set alpha to be minus 60 degrees and beta to be 45 degrees so that we can use the difference of the two. So the tangent of minus 105 degrees is the tangent of negative 60 minus 45 degrees. Now refer to the tangent of alpha minus beta, the formula on the right at the top of the page, where alpha is going to be minus 60 degrees and beta is going to be 45 degrees. So we get the tangent of minus 60 degrees minus tangent 45 over 1 plus tangent of minus 60 times tangent of 45 degrees. Referring to reference angles, we can substitute the known values and simplify. If required, we could rationalize this, but that's not a focus of these lectures. We have found an exact value for the tangent of minus 105 degrees. Next up, we have this identity that the sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. This holds regardless of alpha and beta. But what if alpha and beta are the same angle, the two are equal to one another? We actually get a simpler formula. So suppose alpha and beta are both represented now by theta. Then theta plus theta is just 2 theta. But from the sum formula for sines, we get the sine of 2 theta, the sine of theta plus theta, is sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. It's just the formula at the top of the page, but alpha and beta are both equal to theta. But now I simply have 2 sine theta cos theta. This is called the double angle identity for sine. The sine of twice an angle theta is two times the sine of theta cos of theta. Now using the same techniques on the cosine of two theta leads to three identities, all of which are equivalent. We start with the sum formula for cosine. Cosine of alpha plus beta equals cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Now replace alpha and beta with the same angle theta. You'll get the cosine of 2 theta equals cos theta cos theta minus sine theta sine theta, or just cos squared minus sine squared of theta. But now we can start playing around with Pythagorean identities. Remember that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. That means cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. Plugging that in above gives us that cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta. We could also have solved that the sine squared of theta is 1 minus cos squared theta, again from our standard Pythagorean identity. Plugging that in to our original starting formula here would give us cosine of 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. 
These are all called double angle identities for cosine. They're all true. The cosine of 2 theta is the cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. It's also equal to 1 minus 2 times the sine squared theta, and it's also equal to 2 times the cosine squared of theta minus 1. So here are all of the double angle identities that we've derived. One for sine of 2 theta and three equivalent forms for cosine of 2 theta. Now given that the sine of theta is negative 3 fifths and theta is known to be in quadrant 3, let's find both sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta. Now observe that to find sine of 2 theta, we're going to need to know not just the sine of theta, but also the cosine of theta. So that's our first step. So what we have is that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always equal to 1. We know that the sine of theta is negative 3 fifths. This will allow us to solve for cosine squared theta. Therefore, cos theta is plus or minus the square root of 16 over 25, or plus or minus 4 fifths. But we also know theta is in quadrant 3, and in quadrant 3, cosine is negative. So we set cosine theta equal to negative 4 fifths. Now that we know the sine of theta is negative 3 fifths and the cosine of theta is negative 4 fifths, we can use our double angle identities to solve for the desired quantities sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta. So the sine of 2 theta is 2 times the sine of theta cos of theta. We know the sine of theta to be minus 3 fifths and the cos of theta to be minus 4 fifths. This simplifies down to 24 over 25. Also, the cos of 2 theta, we could pick any of the three double angle identities we wish. We're just going to use the first one. Cos of theta is minus 4 fifths. Sine of theta is minus 3 fifths. And this simplifies to 7 over 25. Another example, let's use the double angle identities for sine and cosine to somehow show that the tangent of 2 theta is always 2 times the tangent of theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. Remember that the tangent of an angle is the sine of the angle divided by the cosine. So from our double angle formulas for sine and cosine, we can observe that tan of 2 theta is sine of 2 theta over cos of 2 theta. In the numerator and denominator, we'll apply our known double angle formulas. In the numerator, we get 2 sine of theta cos of theta. And in the denominator, we had three different forms we could have picked. We're going to go with cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. However, we want our right-hand side to involve tan theta and tan squared theta, and we don't have that. But what we could do is divide both numerator and denominator by the same thing, and we're going to divide by cosine squared. Now, while we could have divided by anything we want, I want a 1 here, I have a cos squared. I want a tan squared, I have a sine squared. That really suggests I want to divide this entire denominator by cosine squared. So, if we divide numerator and denominator by cosine squared, we can start to simplify. In the numerator and denominator respectively, we're going to do a little bit of work. So in the numerator, and when I say numerator, I mean the overall numerator, which is itself a fraction, we can cancel out a single power of cosine. And in the denominator, we can break this up into two fractions, cos squared theta over cos squared theta minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. But now note that in our numerator, we have a sine theta over cos theta, that's a tangent. In our denominator, we have cos squared theta over cos squared theta, that's one. And we have a sine squared theta over cos squared theta, and that gives us our desired tan squared theta. So simply by rewriting tangent in terms of sine and cosine, applying double angle formulas and doing a little bit of algebraic trickery, we've shown that the tangent of 2 theta is always equal to 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. We've derived a new identity. This will be the main focus of the next lecture, but we've included an example here. Having discussed double angle identities, there's also something called half angle identities. So start with the double identity for cosine. Cosine of 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. It's also 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. In the first equation, we're going to solve for cosine squared, and in the second, we're going to solve for sine squared. So solving the first equation for cos squared theta gives us cos squared theta is 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. In the second, solving for sine squared theta gives us sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. These are referred to as power reduction formulas. On the left here, we have a second power of cosine, 
equal to a first power of cosine, although there's an extra term, a denominator, and the angle changed. Here, a second power of sine is equal to a first power of cosine, although with an extra term, a denominator, and the angle changed. The ability to replace a higher power of cosine or sine with a lower one is a power reduction, and these are very, very useful formulas to remember once you get to integral calculus. However, referring above, if I let alpha equal two theta, in other words, theta is alpha over two, and substitute those in above, cos squared of alpha over two is one plus cosine alpha over two, or sine squared alpha over two is one minus cosine alpha over two. Now we can take a plus or minus square root, and we get what are called half angle identities. Specifically, cosine of alpha over two is either plus or minus the square root of one plus cos alpha over two, and sine of alpha over two is plus or minus the square root of one minus cos alpha over two. Let's see an example of using a half angle identity. Let's find the exact value of the sine of 22.5 degrees. Observe that this is exactly half of 45 degrees, an angle that we know a lot about. So the sine of 22.5 degrees will be the sine of 45 degrees over two. Referring back to the half angle formula for sine, this will be plus or minus the square root of one minus the cosine of 45 degrees over two. However, 22.5 degrees is in quadrant one where the sine is positive, so we're gonna take the positive square root. However, based on what quadrant your angle is in, do bear in mind there is this ambiguity of the plus or minus. Okay, but for 22.5 degrees in quadrant one, sine is positive, take the positive square root, and plug in the known value for the cosine of 45 degrees. This could be simplified if you want. Again, that's not really our focus. Another example, let's find all solutions for theta between zero and two pi, where the sine of two times theta is equal to the cosine of theta. Now, if this were just sine theta equals cos theta, we know that that would be where tangent is one, and those solutions are just marked off on any standard reference. But here we have the sine of two theta equals the cosine of theta. But using a double angle identity for the sine on the left gives, the sine of two theta is cos theta, let's replace that with two times sine theta cos theta. Now we can gather everything to one side and factor. Resist the impulse to divide anything. Okay, division is only allowed when you're not dividing by zero. So uh, since cosine of theta can be zero, let's not divide by it. But we can subtract it to the other side and factor it out. So now we see that the solutions to this equation are given by either the cosine of theta equals zero or two sine theta minus one equals zero. For the product of two things to be zero, one of them must be zero. And we're looking for solutions between zero and two pi. When is the cosine of theta equal to zero? Pi over two and three pi over two. When is two sine theta minus one equal to zero? Exactly when the sine of theta is a half, and that's theta equals pi over six or five pi over six. Altogether, there are four solutions for theta between zero and two pi to our original equation. Theta can be pi over two or three pi over two. Those would make the cosine of theta zero, which would be enough. Or theta could be pi over six or five pi over six. That would make the sine of theta a half which would make two sine theta minus one equal to zero, which would also solve our expression.